Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about how to get diagnosed with EDS and actually it takes most people at least five years to get this diagnosis and the reason for that is that the symptoms are so varied they seem like they're not related and doctors don't always see the signs. So with most other conditions you'd go to the doctors, the doctor would spot it and you would be diagnosed. But with EDS people are slipping through the net, they're going to the doctors, the doctors can't piece things together or they just sort of treat one symptom. For me I would go to the doctors and I would say what was wrong and they would sort of latch onto one symptom and give me tablets and be like just take this tablet and you'll be fine. And actually that wasn't helping me because there was so much going on. EDS affects so many body systems and it can affect your whole life and just so many things. So a diagnosis is really important so that you can get the right treatment. So firstly I want to talk about who to see because who can diagnose this illness which affects so many body systems? For me it started primarily heart based so with POTS but a cardiologist wasn't going to diagnose the full picture. So who do you see when you've got so many body systems being affected? Well, the thing with EDS is that really any doctor can diagnose it. However, a lot of doctors won't feel like they are able to make that diagnosis because it's a huge thing. An EDS diagnosis is based on so many factors. And so just because any doctor can diagnose it doesn't mean they will. And actually, the two types of doctors who are most likely to diagnose it are rheumatologists or geneticists. So let's talk about how to get to that point because it's all well and good knowing that you need to see a rheumatologist, but like I said, sometimes you go to the doctors, you get dismissed and you don't get seen by a rheumatologist. So what then? So I'll first talk about how this would work in the UK. So first you would want to see your GP, your family doctor, and tell them what's going on. And you want to make clear that this is affecting your quality of life. You don't want it to be mentioning things like, oh, I'm flexible because what's the problem? You want to make sure that you're outlining the things that are problematic, the things that are making you be in pain or not be well and you just want to emphasise that this is really affecting you and if it's affecting your quality of life then you do want to tell them that and then at this point some doctors will be thinking oh maybe this is EDS and they'll discuss a referral with you however if your doctor is doing that thing where they latch onto one symptom and just want to um, treat that symptom it's okay for you to speak up and say to them I've been researching this because I'm so heavily affected by it and I seem to fit EDS. Is it possible for me to see a rheumatologist to either get a diagnosis or to rule it out? And I know that can be difficult to do because you don't want to come across as though you're doing their job for them, but it's okay for you to say, for you to suggest it if it hasn't come into their head. It's okay for you to suggest, like, could it be this? And to bring up the conversation. And then sometimes if they're still not listening because that does happen. One thing that my friend told me to do was that if someone refuses to give you a referral, ask them to put it in your notes. So you can say, okay, I accept that you won't give me this referral, but can I have it written in my notes? Because if anything comes up in the future, I want it written down that I was refused it at this time. And again, um, I've never said that. I don't know if I would have the courage to say that myself, but I, I hope that I would. And I would encourage you to do that because it is important that they at least let this be considered and looked at. You don't want to be asking for a diagnosis because you don't know if you have EDS at this point. Only a doctor can tell you. But if they don't even give you a chance to be seen by a doctor, then how are you going to know? I mean, even for your peace of mind, and you can explain this to them, you don't know, but for your own peace of mind and because of what you've read about, you'd really like this to be either ruled out or potentially diagnosed. So then at this point, hopefully you've got that referral to a rheumatologist and then what the rheumatologist can do is go through the hypermobile EDS criteria because hypermobile EDS doesn't have a gene identified yet. 
There is no genetic test because we haven't found the gene for it. So instead, there's a list of criteria that can tell you whether you have hypermobile EDS based on the criteria. I'm going to link a video here, which is the EDS criteria. My friend Izzy made the video and it's really good. And if you're wondering if you have EDS, that might be good just for you to have a look at. But a rheumatologist can use that to give you a diagnosis. However, if you seem to have signs of EDS, but they think you don't fit the hypermobile type, they can make the decision to pass you on to genetics and they can run genetic testing because the other types of EDS can be diagnosed by genetic testing and that will give you a clear answer of what type of EDS you have. So to clarify, you want to see your GP, be clear about your symptoms, how this is affecting your life and if they don't suggest it, you want to ask to be referred to rheumatology and rheumatologists are either able to diagnose hypermobile EDS or they can refer you on to genetics for genetic testing. That's the system in the UK and that is the most simple thing that you can do. A lot of people will be diagnosed EDS in a crisis or in an emergency situation but that's not something that I can advise on because that's just the situation that you just happen to be in and it just happens to happen. This video is more so about what to do when you've tried already and you're not being considered and you'd like this to be considered for you. And even though other healthcare systems run differently to how it does in the UK, those two main types of doctors, the rheumatologist and the genetics or geneticist, are really who you want to see. So I've spoke to some of my friends in America and heard how this, how you can do this. And basically they said it depends on your insurance so I'm hoping you will know how this works for you whether you need to go through a PCP which is a primary care physician I think your family doctor or your main doctor and again they would make that referral in the same way and again for you you can talk to them about your symptoms how this is affecting your quality of life how you'd like it to be considered because you either need it to be ruled out or diagnosed you can't just be left in that limbo situation that's not not a nice place to be or if you've got the type of insurance where you can just book an appointment with any doctor then go for it <laughs> and book a rheumatologist appointment that would probably be your best bet alternatively genetics or a geneticist that again could be very useful to you because of how it's done here i sort of think of genetics as skipping a step but that's not necessarily the case Genetics can still go through your family history and they can still go through that hypermobile EDS criteria. So either of those doctors are who you want to see. And I think that's everything I wanted to say. So to recap, you really want to see a rheumatologist or a geneticist, whichever way that your healthcare system allows you to do that. And it doesn't really matter how your healthcare system is run and whether you have to get those referrals or not. Those are the people you need to see and hopefully that gave you a bit of advice about how to get there if you've been struggling to get those referrals or to see those doctors. So I hope this has been helpful. Let me know if you've got any questions and I'll answer those in the comments. Give this video a like if you liked it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!